You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence.com. I'm Mike, and today we're taking a look at a pen that I've had for a while, uh, and I actually have a few copies of. <laughs> this is the Twisby Eco, and I also have an Eco T here to show you as well. So, uh, what I want to do today is talk about like the packaging and stuff that comes with it. I want to talk about the pen itself. We're going to do a little writing sample. We'll talk about measurements. I'll show it next to a bunch of other pens, and then we'll get out of here. All right. So, this is the boxing that uh, the Twisby Eco comes in. Has a cardboard sleeve. Has this nice plastic box, which is cool. Uh, you open this guy up. Uh, does it say which one this was? Ah, this is my orange one. Cool. So you open it up and you have these instructions. I have a little note here from John at Lemur Inc. because that's who I bought this from. It's very nice when a vendor throws in a note. I like it. Inside here, you find instructions for how to uh, how to care for your pen. So this down here is about how to fill your pen, about filling it from a bottle of ink. This up here is about using these tools they throw in there. What does this say? Oh, don't use alcohol on here. Solid, <laughs> solid instruction. Uh, you can see it sort of fits in here. This is a shaped foam thing, nice and protective. You have a little bottle of a very liquidy sort of silicone grease. This is the kind of grease you use for greasing pistons and not the kind of grease you use for sealing eyedropper pens. Don't use it for that. It is not good at that. And it also, of course, gives you a wrench. Uh, they usually put in a wrench with Twisby pens. Uh, this is my original one. I think this probably came with um, probably my uh, Twisby 530 back in the day or else my VAC 700. Uh, this is a metal one. The one for the Eco is a plastic one, but they both do the same thing. So like this has got to be cheaper, right? So that's cool. All right. Um, it also shows you like how to, uh, and it says actually don't use the metal one, probably because this is uh, plastic in here and you'll chew it up if you try using the metal one that they gave you with the other. But it also says don't over tighten uh, all these kinds of things. Put a little silicone grease on here if you have to. I've actually not opened up any of these and I got this black one the very first, uh, this is the like original Twisby Eco. Like I got this years ago. I don't even remember what year it came out, but uh, it's never actually needed to be greased. So uh, maintenance on these is easy if you have to do it, but also like don't take your pens apart too much because sometimes you can crack them or damage them in other ways. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Uh, you have this nice opaque barrel. You have a Twisby logo up here on the cap. There it is. You've got a pretty good clip here. Uh, this clip shows no, has no problems. It hasn't been like bent out or anything. And this is a pen that I feel totally confident just chucking in a bag, throwing in a pocket. Uh, I hang it off the placket of my shirt a lot of times. I haven't had any problems with it at all. You have a piston mechanism in here. This is a piston fill only pen. You can't put cartridges in here. Uh, don't try. So use a bottle of ink, but that's what we want to do anyway, right? Uh, this, when you unscrew it, of course, we'll push this piston down. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to do that because I have ink in this pen, and that would be a horrible mess. <laughs> but this thing moves pretty easily and uh, no problems there. You do have an O-ring on the back here to, keep, to help this uh, cap post if you want to. And I actually will write with this one posted with no problem. The cap is very, very lightweight and uh, doesn't overbalance the pen. At least not in my estimation. It does make it a bit long, uh, and I will often just like put the cap over here. Because this cap is faceted, it's not going anywhere. It's also got a clip on it, which is helpful. All right, looking at the front of this pen, you can see the feed and the like bottom of the nib. You can see the ink in there. Sometimes uh, I know people that... Uh, uh, sell these pens and like makers of pens with clear sections will get questions saying, hey, there's a bunch of ink right around here. Has something gone wrong? No, that's how these all work. And actually all your pens look like this inside of the uh, the nib housing or inside that section. You can just see it on the Eco. Now, the uh, Twisby before the Eco was having a bunch of problems with cracking and such. Probably everybody has had a cracked Eco story, or not Eco, a cracked Twisby story. Uh, I haven't had any problems with the Eco. And in fact, I've heard that the problems with the Eco are fairly... Uh, uh, rare. I, I've got four of them. None of them have any cracks, breaks, uh, no problems at all, which is cool. And one of the ways that they did that is they made this all one piece. So there's no extra stress here to break things. There's no extra stress up here to break things. This uh, nib and feed are friction fit, so you can pull them out and put them back in. Uh, they don't have a, there's no separate collar or any of, those, any of that assembly in there. The nib is about a number five. 
I know some people have uh, taken these out and swapped them for other nibs, especially vintage nibs and that sort of thing. I've never done that, so I'm not going to give you advice on how that works. But if you Google around, you can probably find other things that fit in these uh, these pens. However, I will say I really like the nibs on these Twisby Ecos. I've got four. All of them have been good, and they're various nib sizes, so that's good. Unlike my, uh, my VAC 700, which takes a standard number six, but I've never really liked a nib that came with that pen. Uh, this one, these have all been great. Okay, uh, there's nothing else to take apart. That's, that's, these are the parts. <laughs> that's it. Okay, so this is one variety of the Eco, and you can see it has this uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, hexagonal cap here, and uh, that's, uh, that's cool. Now, there is an Eco T. The Eco T is triangular in some sense. You can see it has a three-sided cap which is pretty neat. Uh, everything else is the same, essentially. The piston knob is also triangular, which matches. And do they match up the sides? Oh, the sides do match up. Oh, that's nice. I've never really noticed that before. Okay, here's the other difference on the Eco T, and that's that the uh, grip section is actually a little bit triangular. Now, if you're like me, you're having trouble seeing that. You can see a little bit of a facet there, perhaps. But since it's clear, uh, I got this trick from my friend Kimberly, all the hobbies on Instagram, throw her a follow. But if you wrap a little bit of washi tape around the grip, you can see the triangularness. Like it helps you pick out the sides better. You can see the peaks a little bit better here and here and here. Now this is a fairly gentle triangular section, but it does uh, encourage the sort of standard grip, which is like this. Uh, if you have a grip that's over the top or some other variation, uh, you might be a little bothered by the Eco T. Uh, my my wife Audrey has a very, has a little bit of a non-standard grip. I don't think she minds the Eco T because it's not as aggressive as like the one on a, uh, a Safari or anything like that. But uh, it is it is there. So if you don't like that, go for the regular Eco. If you do like it, go for the T. I actually really like the T. I think the T feels great. And also like a weird. Oh, let me take this off here. A weird thing about these pens is that I have tended to find an ink that I like in them and just leave it in there. Uh, in fact, I think all of these pens have only had like one ink in them. This one's Audrey's. This has Sailor Manio Ha Ha in it, which looks, I think, pretty cool. It's got this nice pale blue color. Uh, this is my uh, transparent orange one which has a nib uh, that's ground on there. Audrey did that for me. And this has had, um, I'm relatively sure that this is Graf von Faber-Castell burned orange, although I'd have to look it up. Uh, this one has Sailor Shikiori Yonaga in it. I, I love it in this pen, and I've never put anything else in there. And this has uh, Monteverde's Scotch Brown. I really like Scotch Brown in this pen. I don't know exactly why. Okay, so uh, let's talk measurements and stuff. Here they are. You can see uh, that the uh, the length capped about five and a half inches, one thirty eight millimeters, five seventeen uncapped, posted six and a half ish, uh, which is fairly long, of course. And then the pocket depth is five point one five, which has worked out with a lot of my uh, my shirt pockets and that sort of thing. Section diameter uh, nine point one to eleven point one. That's going from the very small end up here up to just before the threads. You do have a bit of a uh, bit of a well, as you can see, a change there of about two millimeters from front to back. Uh, so it depends on where you want to hold it. But uh, I mean, I find holding it just before the threads is pretty perfect for me. And that's not a surprise because it's probably about 10 millimeters right there. All right, weight, seven ounces, which is 10, 20, or, sorry, 0.7 ounces. Seven ounces would be a very heavy pen, which is 22 grams. And uh, I think that's just fine. Uh, the body on these are all plastic. That's just how they roll. The nibs are all steel. There is no gold nib variety of this. Although you might be able to swap in like a vintage gold nib of some kind if you want to give that a shot. Um, as for uh, sizes, they go from extra fine up to a 1.1 stub. I've actually not used the 1.1 stub on this one, uh, but I have, uh, do I have extra fine? I don't have an extra fine. I have fine, medium, and broad. I've got the very normal sizes, uh, which is not terribly surprising to me. And as for price, uh, $30.99. So this is a pretty medium price pen, I think. And I think a solid price point that isn't going to scare people off when they're starting to get into fountain pens. Uh, but, uh, you know... 30 bucks I think is is great for these and uh, clearly you know I've kept that I've kept that up for a while uh, truth be told I bought the original one of these pens this black one because I really thought that uh, I was like ah, I don't care about this too much like it looks fine but whatever it's like a little toy pen but uh, I'll use it for the blog and do a little review and it'll be that'll be it uh, the truth is though 
um, obviously. I really like this pen, and I just never got around to reviewing it until now. And I, it's one of those things that happens to reviewers. We just like, we use a thing all the time. We never think to actually make a review of it. All right. So here it is next to a whole bunch of other pens. We have here the Pilot Prera, the Monteverde Ritmo, which is a surprising new pen. This is a Franklin Christoph Model 66, the Twisby Go I reviewed not too long ago, the Diplomat Arrow, of course, a beloved member of my collection, the Twisby Eco here, the Lamy All Star, the Franklin Christoph O2. I've got two O2s in there. It's probably overkill, but whatever. I've got the uh, Twisby Vax 700, which is the big boy. And then the extra big boy, this is the uh, um, Opus 88 Omar, which is kind of a kind of a baton of a pen, right? So the Eco fits right in here nicely, right next to the, uh, the Lamy All-Star, a little bit longer perhaps than the Diplomat, but just barely. So if you are a fan of the Lamy All-Star or the Safari size, uh, Eco is right up your alley. If you think this is too small, cool. This is a little bit bigger. This is more of a pocket pen. I always think the prayer is a pocket pen. Eco, very nice full-size pen. Okay, let's give it a bit of a writing sample. Okay, writing sample time. This one is... The Twisby Eco's fine nib, which is a very nice fine nib. Unaltered, just sort of a round nib going on there. Then, uh, let's see, what have I got? Uh, the blue is a medium. This is my Eco T. which I think is a pretty nice nib as well. Uh, definitely noticeably broader than the regular Eco, or the regular, the fine Eco, but uh, nonetheless, very nice. And then uh, two broads. And again, the broad is significantly larger than the medium, uh, but uh, this ink is uh, this ink is so cool. It's Manio Ha Ha. There's so many colors and things going on there. Anyway, uh, and then this one is a broad as well, but it's also been kind of stubbed. Uh, well, this is kind of an italic. I don't know. I told Audrey to make me something cool, and she did. All right. I've been sort of writing around a corner, which is why I'm going like this. Uh, so there you go. Um, I think there is... Uh my favorite nibs for this one are going to be the fine and the medium, and I, I tend to, to see that that's uh, true across the Twisby line for me. Uh, I really like their fines. I think they're a good uh, good width for everyday writing, and the medium, I think, is uh, just uh, is good as well, although quite a bit broader. So the broad nib is pretty big, and it has a good amount of tipping on it, I think. So if you want to get those ground down, uh, get something interesting put on there, broad is maybe the way to go. Okay, so thank you very much for hanging out with me and looking at Ecos. Uh, I hope that uh, you have one of these in, in your collection. If you don't, go and uh, you know, find the color that works for you. You can find these at all of your favorite places. I got this one definitely from, uh, from Anderson Pens. This one came from Lemur Inc. Uh, this one almost certainly also from Anderson Pens. And then uh, this one came from Dromgools. So I've been spreading around the eco love and I'm sure there'll be more colors I'm going to have to get because these are great pens and I really love the way they write and the way they perform. So uh, check those out uh, and I will see y'all later. Uh, if you have questions or comments, leave them down below. Please do hit the subscribe button. Like it if you liked it. That'd be awesome. And uh, hit my Patreon, patreon.com slash if you want to help support this channel and keep it ad free. All right, that's it. Peace out.